Next, a modern mystery classic, Agnes Moorhead's eighth suspense performance of Sorry, Wrong Number on the CBS Radio Network. Radio 59, WROW, first on the dial, serving Albany, Troy, and Schenectady. Radio 59 time, 6, 5.30. Suspense. On May 25th, 1943, a great radio play was performed on suspense and carried on CBS radio. That now famous radio play has been transferred to other media as well. Television, motion pictures, recordings, and the stage. The title was Sorry, Wrong Number, and it was written by Lucille Fletcher and originally starred Agnes Moorhead. We revive that radio classic now with the same star of 17 years ago. Listen then to... Agnes Moorhead in Sorry, Wrong Number, which begins in one minute. Remember how much racket automobiles used to make? Time was you practically had to bellow to make yourself heard above the chatter and roar of the engine, the howl of the wind rushing by, and the rattling a rough road gave your poor old buggy and brains. Well, nowadays, with vastly improved automotive engineering and magnificent new superhighways, you literally purr along the road. Now, this is a vast improvement, but one that can offer danger if you're not alert. You're sitting behind the wheel with the miles of highway unrolling smoothly before you. Suddenly, a sharp curve jumps in front of you, and you find you have to use the skill of a professional racer to navigate the curve without getting into real big trouble. Your car was so quiet that your speed had crept up stealthily during those long miles of straightaway. You were burning along without realizing it. The point here, a simple one, is this. Your speedometer was put there for a purpose. A purpose you can't afford to forget. Keep alert, take care, and get there. And now... Sorry, Wrong Number, starring Miss Agnes Moorhead. A tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. Operator? Operator, I've been dialing Murray Hill 40599. Now, for the last three quarters of an hour, and the line is always busy, I don't see how it could be busy that long. Will you try it for me, please? I will be glad to try that number for you. One moment, please. You see, it's my husband's office. He's working late tonight, and I'm all alone here in the house. My health is very poor, and I've been feeling so nervous all I'm day. I'm ringing Murray Hill 40599. Hello? 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 Is Mr. Stevenson there? Hello? 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 Hello, George? Yes, boss, this is George speaking. Hello, who's this? What number is this, please? I'm here with our client. Oh, good. Is everything set up for tonight? Well, yes, George. He says everything is set up. Good. What number is this, please? Where are you now? In the phone booth. Don't worry, everything is okay in my department. Very well. You got the address? Sure, I got it all cased. At 11 o'clock, the private patrolman goes around to a bar on 2nd Avenue for a what? beer. Yes. At 11.15, a train crosses the bridge. Makes a noise in case her window is open and she should scream. Uh, hello? Remember, George, make it quick. Our client doesn't wish her to suffer long. Oh. I'll use a knife then. Yes, a knife will do very well. And remember afterwards, remove her rings and bracelets and the jewelry in the bureau drawer. Oh. Our client wishes it to look like simple robbery. I know, I know. Don't worry. I never muff a job like this. Everything's okay. I never... Oh, how awful. How unspeakably awful. Never... Operator? Operator, I've just been cut off. I'm sorry. What number were you calling? Well, it was supposed to be Murray Hill 40599, but it wasn't some wires must have got crossed, and I was cut into a wrong number, and I, I've just heard the most dreadful things, something about a murder. And, Operator, you'll simply have to trace that call at once. What was the number? Well, I don't know. It was a wrong number, and these two men, they were cold-blooded fiends. And they were going to murder somebody. Some poor, innocent woman who was all alone in a house near a bridge. Uh, we've got to stop them. We've what just got to... What number were you calling? Well, please? that doesn't matter. It was a wrong number. Now, look, it was obviously a case of some little slip of the finger. I asked you to get me Murray Hill 40599 who dialed it, but your finger must have slipped. And I was connected with some other number. I, I could hear them, but they couldn't hear me. 
Now, I simply fail to see why you couldn't make that same mistake again on purpose, why you couldn't try to dial Murray Hill 40599 in the same sort of careless way. Murray Hill 40599. I will try to get it for you. Well, thank you. Sorry, Murray Hill 40599 is busy. Uh, but, Operator... Yes, ma'am? You didn't try to get that wrong number at all. I asked you explicitly, and all you did was dial correctly. I'm sorry. I will connect you with the supervisor. Well, please. This is the supervisor. May I help you? Uh, yes. I, I want you to trace a call, a telephone call immediately. I don't know where it came from or who was making it, but it's absolutely necessary that it be traced because it was about a murder that someone's planning. A, a terrible, cold-blooded murder of a poor, innocent woman. Tonight, at 11.15. I see. Well, can you trace it for me? Can you track down those men? I'm not certain. I can try. May I have your name, please? Uh, Mrs. Stevenson. Mrs. Albert Stevenson. But, but listen... And I, your telephone number, please? Oh, Plaza 37599. But if you go on wasting all this why time... Why do you want this call traced, please? Why? Well, I told you why. These men sounded like killers. They're dangerous. They're going to murder this woman at 11.15 tonight, and I thought the police ought to know. Have you reported this to the police? Well, no, not yet. You want this call checked purely as a private individual? Well, yes, but meanwhile... I'm sorry, you... Mrs. Stevenson, but I'm afraid we couldn't trace the call just on your say-so as a private individual. Oh. We'd have to have something more official. Oh, for heaven's sake. Well, all right, I'll call the police. Thank you. I'm sure that would be the best way to get home. Oh. Ridiculous. <laughs> The second act of Suspense continues in one minute. Meet star Stuart Irwin. Nothing's worse for an actor than a nasty cold. To feel better quickly, I take wonderful four-way cold tablets. The fast way to relieve cold distress. Right. Tests of all the leading cold tablets proved four-way fastest acting. Four-way starts in minutes to relieve muscular pains, headache, reduce fever, calm upset stomach, also overcomes irregularity. Take my advice. For your next cold, take four-way cold tablets, the fast way to relieve those cold miseries. Four-way, only 29 cents. Our program will continue in a moment after a word about another fine product of Grove Laboratories. Had dandruff for years? Now get rid of it in three minutes with Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo. Three minutes with Fitch regularly is guaranteed to keep unsightly dandruff away forever. Apply Fitch before wetting hair, rub in one minute, add water, lather one minute, then rinse one minute. Every trace of dandruff goes down the drain. Three minutes with Fitch, embarrassing dandruff's gone. Fitch can also leave hair up to 35% brighter. Get Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo today. And now... We continue with Act Two of Sorry, Wrong Number, starring Miss Agnes Moorhead. A tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Operator? The police department. Get me the police department, please. Thank you. I will connect you with the police department. Oh, dear, you have to dial. Can't you ring them directly? <sighs> Police station, precinct 43, Sergeant Martin speaking. Police department? Oh, uh, uh, this is Mrs. Stevenson. Mrs. Albert Smythe Stevenson of 53 North Sutton Place. I'm calling up to report a murder. I, I mean, the, the murder hasn't been committed yet, but I just... I overheard plans for it over the telephone, over a wrong number that the operator gave me. Yes, ma'am. It was a perfectly definite murder. I heard their plans distinctly. Uh, two men were talking, and they were going to murder some woman at 11.15 tonight. Uh, she lived in a house near a bridge. Are you listening to me? Yes, ma'am. And there was a private patrolman on the street. He was going to go around for a beer on 2nd Avenue. And uh, uh, there was some third man, a client, who was paying to have this poor woman murdered. They were going to take her rings and bracelets and use a knife. Uh, well, it's, it's just unnerved me dreadfully, and I'm not well. I see, and... Uh... When was all this, ma'am? About eight minutes ago. And what was that number you were calling? Murray Hill 40599. But that wasn't the number I overheard. I mean, Murray Hill 40599 is my husband's office. He's working late tonight, and I was trying to reach him to ask him to come home. 
I'm an invalid, you know, and it's the maid's night off, and I hate to be alone, even though he says I'm perfectly safe as long as I have the telephone right beside my bed. Well, we'll look into it, Mrs. Stevenson, see if we can check it with the telephone company. Check, check it! I've already taken care of that. Oh, you have? Yes, and personally, I feel you ought to do something far more immediate and drastic than just check the call. I'd say the whole thing calls for a search. A complete and thorough search of the whole city. I'm very near the bridge, and I'm not far from 2nd Avenue, and I know I'd feel a whole lot better if you sent around a radio car to this neighborhood at once. And what makes you think the murder's going to be committed in your neighborhood, ma'am? Well, I... Well, I don't know. Only the coincidence is so horrible. Uh, 2nd Avenue, the patrolman, the bridge... Look, lady, why don't you look at it this way? Suppose you hadn't broken in on that telephone call. Suppose you'd got your husband the way you always do. You wouldn't be so upset, would you? Well... I suppose not, only it sounded so inhuman, so cold-blooded. Unless, of course, you have some reason for thinking that someone may be planning to murder you. Me? Oh, no, no, I hardly think so. I I mean, why should anybody? I'm alone all day and night. I, I see nobody except my maid, Eloise. She's a big girl. She weighs 200 pounds. She's too lazy to bring up my breakfast tray. And the only other person is my husband, Albert. He's just crazy about me. He just adores me. Waits on me hand and foot. Is scarcely left my side since I took sick 12 years ago. Well, then there's nothing for you to worry about. Now, if you'll just leave the rest of this to us, we'll take care of it. But what will you do? It's so late. It's nearly 11 now. We'll take care of it, lady. Well, will you broadcast it all over the city and send out squads and warn your radio cars to watch out, especially in suspicious neighborhoods like mine? Look, lady, I said we'd take care of it. Just now, I've got a couple of trunks here that require my immediate attention. Good night, ma'am, and thank you. Oh, you... You idiot. Oh. Now, why did I hang up the phone like that? Now he'll think I am a fool. Oh, why doesn't Albert come home? Why doesn't he? Get the operator. Operator? Operator, for heaven's sake, will you ring that Murray Hill 40599 number again? I can't think what's keeping him so long. I will try it for you. Try. Sorry, Murray Hill 40599 is busy. I can hear it. You don't have to tell me. I know it's busy. Oh, if I could only get out of this bed for a little while. If I could just get a breath of fresh air or just lean out of the window and see the street. Oh. Hello? Albert? Hello? 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 Oh, what's the matter with this phone? Hello? Hello? What in the world... Oh, for heaven's sake, who is this? Hello? 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 What in the world? What are they trying to do to me anyway? Operator. Hello, operator. I don't know what's the matter with this telephone tonight, but it's positively driving me crazy. I've never seen such inefficient, miserable service. Now, look, I'm an invalid, and I'm very nervous, and I'm not supposed to be annoyed. But if this keeps on much longer... What seems to be the trouble, please? Well, everything's wrong. I haven't had one bit of satisfaction out of one call I've made this evening. The whole world could be murdered for all you people care, and now my phone keeps ringing and ringing and ringing and ringing every five seconds, and when I pick it up, there's over there. I'm sorry. If you will hang up, I will test it for you. I don't want you to test it for me. I want you to put that call through, whoever it is, at once. I'm afraid I can't do that. You can't? Oh, you can't. And why? Why, may I ask? The dial system is automatic. Automatic? And meanwhile, I've got to sit here in my bed suffering every time that phone rings, imagining everything. I will try to check the trouble for you. Oh, for heaven's sake, I'm going to run on my mind. Hello? Hello? Stop ringing me. Do you hear? Answer me. Who is this? Do you realize you're driving me crazy? Who's calling me? What are you doing it for? Now, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. I say, hello? If you don't stop ringing me, I'm going to call the police. You hear? The police. I... Oh, <laughs> oh if, if Albert would only come home. Oh, let it ring. Go on, go on, ring. This trick is some kind. I won't answer that one. Go on, ring, ring, ring. Ring. <laughs> At this moment, it's beyond mankind's capacity to guess what will occupy the attention of CBS Radio's Bob and Ray tomorrow night. 
It's possible they may be investigating such matters as the molecular structure of money or giving the recipe for vulcanized bison. Perhaps distinguished correspondent Wally Ballou may take us via the magic of radio to the broom garage of a witch. Or we may receive a report on our feathered friends from the bird lady, whose discourse on the drag-tailed blockbuster recently created unparalleled apathy among bird watchers from coast to coast. Actually, you may not hear any of these matters. If you're courageous, though, take potluck with the boys. Anything they serve up is full of chuckles. That's Bob and Ray, weeknights, at this spot on your radio dial. Laugh along, too, with Amos and Andy, Andy Griffith, and Burns and Allen on Comedy Time, Monday through Friday, on CBS Radio. And now... We continue with Act Three of Sorry, Wrong Number... Starring Miss Agnes Moorhead. A tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! I can't stand it anymore! Stop it! Hello! What do you want? Stop ringing me! Stop it! Just stop it! Hello! Is this Plaza 37599? Oh, yes. Yes, I'm sorry. This is Plaza 37599. This is Western Union. I have a telegram here for Mrs. Albert Stevenson. Oh, well, I'm Mrs. Stevenson. The telegram is as follows. Darling, terribly sorry. Tried to get you for last hour, but line busy. Oh. Leaving for Boston 11 p.m. tonight on urgent business. Oh, no. Back tomorrow afternoon. <laughs> Keep happy. Love, signed Albert. Oh, oh, no. Do you wish us to deliver a copy of the message? No. No, no, thank you. Thank you, madam. Good night. Good night. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't believe it. He, he couldn't do it. Not when he knows I'll be all alone. It's some trick, some fiendish trick. <laughs> Operator. Operator. Operator, try that Murray Hill 40599 number for me just once more, please. You may dial that number direct. Oh, I can't. I'll do anything for me. I... I... Oh, it's got to be the... Oh, he's gone. Oh, Albert, how could you? How could you? I can't be alone tonight. I just... I just can't. If I'm alone one more second, I'll go mad. I... I don't care what he says or... or or what the expense is. I'm a sick woman. I'm entitled to a little consideration. (laughs) Information. Information. I I want the telephone number of of Henchley Hospital. Henchley Hospital? Do you have the street address? Uh, no, no, but it's somewhere in the 70s. It's a very small, private, and exclusive hospital where I had my appendix out two years ago. Henchley, H E N. One moment, please. Uh, well, please hurry, and please, what is the time? You may find out the time by dialing Meridian oh. 71212. Oh, for heaven's sake, I've no time to be dialing. The Henchley Hospital is Butterfield 8. Butterfield 2598. Oh. oh. Butterfield. Eight, two, five, nine, eight. Henchley Hospital, good evening. Uh, uh, Nurses' registry, please. Who was it you wished to speak to, please? I want the nurses' registry at once. I want a trained nurse. I want to hire her immediately for the night. I see. And what is the nature of the case, madam? Nerves! I'm very nervous. I need soothing and companionship. You see, my, my husband is away. Have you been recommended and I... to us by any doctor in particular, madam? No. And our superintendent has asked us to send people out only in those cases where the physician in charge feels it is absolutely necessary. Well, it is absolutely necessary. I'm, I'm a sick woman. I'm, I'm, I'm very upset. I'm alone in this house and I'm an invalid. And, and tonight I overheard a telephone conversation that upset me dreadfully. In fact, if someone doesn't come at once, I'm afraid I'll go out of my mind. I see. 
Well, I'll speak to Miss Phillips as soon as she comes in. Miss Phillips? And what is your name, madam? When do you expect her in? I really couldn't say. She went out to supper at 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock? But it's not 11 yet. Where's my clock? Oh, my clock has stopped. Oh, what time is it? Just 15 minutes past 11. Oh, what was that? What was... What, madam? That... That click. Just now. In my own telephone. As though someone has lifted the receiver off the hook of the extension phone downstairs. I didn't hear it, madam. Now about... But I did! Kid. There's someone in this house. Someone downstairs in the kitchen and they're... They're listening to me now. They're... I won't pick it up. I won't let them hear me. I'll be quiet, my mouthy. If I don't call someone now, while they're still down there, there'll be no time. I've got to get the operator. I've got to get the operator. 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 I'm uh, I'm in desperate trouble. I'm sorry, I cannot hear you. Please speak louder. I don't. I don't dare. There's someone listening. Can you hear me now? I'm sorry. But you've got to hear me. Oh, please, you've got to help me. There's there's someone in this house. Someone who's going to murder me, and you've got to get in touch with him. There it is. Did you hear it? He's, he's put it down. He's put down my extension phone. He's, he's coming up. He's, he's coming up the stairs. Oh, give me the police department. Give me the police department. One moment, please. I will connect you. Please. Get the police. Oh, he's got to hurry. Get the police. Department? Sorry, wrong number. Don't worry, everything is okay here. Suspense. In which Miss Agnes Moorhead starred in William N. Robeson's production of Sorry, Wrong Number. Written by Lucille Fletcher. In a moment, the names of our supporting players and a word about next week's story of suspense. Are you all out of tune because you're irregular? Then help yourself get back in tune with Kellogg's All Brand. You'll feel right on pitch when Kellogg's All Brand goes gently to work. Relieves constipation due to lack of bulk by supplying your system with bulk-forming whole bran. Yes, a daily bowl full of Kellogg's All Bran with milk helps put you right back in tune. The natural way. The good-tasting way, too. Fact is, Kellogg's All Bran is the one brand cereal that combines proved effectiveness with appetizing taste and crispness. It never gets mushy in milk. So remember, if constipation's a problem... Gentle it away, as millions do, with Kellogg's All Bran. The good food way to keep regular as clockwork. A double L hyphen B R A N. Kellogg's All Bran. At your grocers. Supporting Miss Moorhead in Sorry Wrong Number were Jeanette Nolan, Virginia Gregg, Ellen Morgan, Joe DeSantis, Byron Kane, and Norm Alden. <laughs> again next week when we return with The Crank Letter by Walter Black. Another tale well calculated to keep you in Suspense. Listen every week to Suspense on CBS Radio. <laughs>